Free surface effect is the term we use to describe uh, something on board the ship, whether it be a whole lot of green water on the deck, uh, the fluid in your tanks, the fluid in your bilge, um, a whole lot of fish catch from the trawl net sliding from side to side on the vessel. All of these things have a surface that is free to move. So free surface effect is the effect on the stability of your ship due to this. Free surface effect is the, the term we use to describe the effect of stuff on board the vessel, whether it be seawater on the deck, fluid in your tanks, uh, fluid in the bilge, that has a surface that is free to move. It also has a mass, therefore, that is free to move from side to side, therefore transferring its centre of gravity in a fairly uncontrolled manner. Here's a bowl of water filled to approximately 50% and we can see that as I incline the vessel its underwater shape or the uh, I should say the shape of the fluid changes considerably and I urge you to have a look at where you think the center of gravity of that mass is as this rolls okay it's a bit like the center of buoyancy isn't it from the ship rolling from side to side only this time let's reverse things and fill this vessel full of water you can see in your mind's eye that G is shifting quite considerably in this what we'll now call a tank. Let's draw that on the board. Here is a conventional square tank filled to 50%. I'm going to make it 50% because that's when free surface is at its worst. And we can find the center of that by simply drawing some diagonals across, let's just say it's there, little g, the centre of that mass. Now let's tip the... A bit windy out here, hope that's not too noisy. Let's just incline the tank now and see that g, the centre of gravity is now over here somewhat. It used to be there. Little g to little g1. Let's just say that that is a tonne of fluid and the shift in the centre of gravity of that fluid was half a metre we now have 0 0.5 tonne metres worth of moment that's been exerted on the ship. Now let's multiply a few tanks like that that have been poorly managed. They're all what's called slack, which means they're not full and they're not empty, or they're not pressed and they're not empty. They're slack tanks and 50% is the worst. Then we could have a number of tanks exerting that moment on the ship. And just think about how uncontrolled this is, all of that weight sloshing from side to side. But remember, even though its effect in reality is to make the centre of gravity of your ship move from side to side. Remember rule three of the uh, laws of G. It actually gives the ship an apparent rise in the centre of gravity. It makes the ship behave as though the centre of gravity is much higher than it actually is. So I've departed from my traditional uh, wine glass shaped hull that I tend to draw. Given this one uh, some fuller bilges in which we can we can accommodate some wing tanks. Now whether these be fuel, water, doesn't matter aside from the fact that their specific gravity will differ of course, remember that. But these tanks are slack, where they're half full, they're not pressed, they're not empty, so they can go slosh slosh. Now yes we do have things in tanks called baffles which run longitudinally which reduce this effect, but for clarity let's not think about that. Let's just imagine that it is all free to move. And we can even put a little bit of water in here in the bilge too. Here is the vessel as we know. We're all familiar with this. This is a stable vessel that is inclined. However, we've now had a shift in the centre of gravity in the fluid in these tanks. So the centre of gravity of the tanks could be said to be there. There's G and uh, there's G there. And we can see that there's been a shift as the vessel is now inclined and everything's gone slosh. G has moved to G1, little g that is, has moved to G1. This has exerted a moment on the vessel. Now we'd need to know how much mass is in the tank and how much it moves, but luckily again, this data can be found from the stability book that the Naval Architect has provided us with, so it's not that difficult. What does the third law of G say? It says that when a weight is moved on board the vessel, the center of gravity of the vessel moves proportionately parallel to that shift in weight. So we can now see that, looking at these little red arrows here roughly, that G will move proportionately 
and we're going to call this G1 down in that direction. I'll put a little arrow here to indicate that. So the new GZ lever becomes shorter. Remembering, of course, always that this is a snapshot in time. This is actually a, a very fluid dynamic thing going on here. We, as just near coastal masters, we have trouble quantifying that, measuring that. But what we can do, and what we'll look at in the next lesson, which deals with these stability calculations in more detail, is in our mind's eye for now, we can take that GZ lever and slide it up until it fits in the stability triangle. Slide it up to about there. Whoops, better do it in red. Up to there. Here it is. The new GZ is actually quite a bit shorter because G is acting as though it's actually there. Now I've done it in red because it's not really there. G in fact has gone down a little bit and off to the side and as this vessel goes from side to side the fluid sloshes from side to side we know that G is going to be busy just sloshing from side to side but the vessel behaves as though G has risen up the centre line. Now we can give this some numerical value using some basic formulas and formulas at this level of stability honestly they're not that hard there's no trigonometry involved there is at higher levels but at this point it's all fairly simple here's a handy one g to g1 that is the shift of the ship's center of gravity to her new center of gravity can be found by multiplying the weight that is the mass of the fluid by the distance that is the amount the fluid moves or the center of gravity of the fluid moves divided by the final displacement of the ship again Remember, these are all given to you in the stability booklet. So let's have an example. Let's just say there is, uh, uh, I don't know, let's just say there's two tonnes of fluid in these tanks. So that's going to equal two. And let's just say the centre of gravity moved half a metre in each. 0 0.5 divided by our displacement. I'm just going to make that 10 tonnes, luckily. Our, sh our ship is 10 tonnes. Then... 2 times 0 0.5, 1 divided by 10, 0 0.1 metres is actually the shift in that centre of gravity downwards. Now we multiply that by 2, of course, because there's two tanks, we're going to end up with 0 0.2 metres or 20 centimetres. The centre of gravity of your ship has shifted 20 centimetres from where it was. It's easier for us to imagine though because we've looked at the metronome, we've looked at all these examples now to just picture that reduced GZ that results, slide it upwards until it fits in the triangle and then we take that measurement.